So in this video, I'd like to continue talking about botnets and, and give you some additional applications of botnets. And hopefully at this point, you're starting to appreciate the fact that botnets can be used for so many different forms of cybercrime. Uh, and truly why we call it the Swiss Army Knife for uh, online cyber criminals. Uh, so one of the first applications I want to talk about is something called Fast Flux. Fast Flux. And Fast Flux has been around, actually it has its origins in spam. But this is basically a technique that involves uh, using DNS or the domain name system to cloak sites that host uh, phishing attacks and, and host malware, etc. And let me kind of give you a bit of a picture to help illuminate the key points here. So imagine you've got a number of, of hosts that are part of a botnet. And again, these are, these are compromised hosts. They have some type of bot malware on them that causes them to be under the control of a command and control server. Okay. Now, um, what you can often use these hosts to do is you can use them as web servers to host, let's say, a phishing attack. So maybe this is a, uh, a fake bank website. Uh, you can imagine that maybe some of these other hosts might have uh, malware on them that uh, they can they can be used as, as a way to kind of distribute malware to other people uh, and, and so on and so forth. So really, th there's bad stuff on these different nodes, and the idea is that these nodes can now be used either web servers or distribution mechanisms for this bad stuff for other unwitting victims. So imagine you've got now a victim here, and, and let's say a victim system that is uh, over here. And uh, we'll kind of draw that out here. Okay, and this is uh, being operated on by some kind of a victim. He has no idea. And maybe his, uh, you know, he goes to a website, he, he somehow ends up uh, downloading malware from, I don't know, let's say uh, this compromised host that was hosting a piece of malware. So imagine this compromised host here has a, a piece of malware on it that. Uh, this guy ends up downloading. Now, that what, what really happens in real life is, is um, this guy's computer doesn't always go directly to this site. What will often happen is he'll, he'll go through a server called the DNS server. And the DNS server is kind of like a phone book for the internet. And, and DNS uh, stands for domain name service. And you'll often hear this uh, in the context of the internet. So it's really the kind of way that internet addresses are translated from or out of uh, real names. So typically, for example, you go to www.site.com, that website actually has an internet address, like maybe it's 68.14.7.9 or something like that. And the idea is a DNS system is the system that translates the name of the site into an actual address on the internet that this computer can then use to find this particular, uh, to find this particular site. Now, with FastFlux, what ends up happening, and this is kind of a high-level overview of FastFlux, is that the the bad guys effectively will associate. Let's say you have uh, they set up a website like www.bad.com, okay, and in, in all these sites, they have a uh, uh, they, they might have uh, there might be multiple addresses that they can associate with the site. Like for example, maybe. Um, you can associate the address 68.14.9.22, and maybe that's the, the address that corresponds to uh, this computer right here. Okay. Now you can also imagine maybe that in addition to, to this address, maybe they, they can also associate multiple addresses as part of one record in DNS, and maybe the, they can also associate the address 54.7.22.5. Okay, maybe that's the address of this computer. And the idea is that if you have a large botnet, you can have many, many addresses that can all be associated with www.bad.com. So now if as a security researcher, I'm able to find out, hey, this is, you know, this site is hosting malware, even if I'm able to, to find a way to take this site and kind of remove it or to clean it up or to not have it be part of the botnet anymore, uh, the DNS system will now Instead of, it will not just route traffic, instead of going to this site, uh, my, my traffic will now go to this site. Okay? And so the idea is that you can use DNS as a way to um, have multiple physical machines corresponding to one name, or multiple IP addresses corresponding to one name. Uh, and FastFlux is a technique whereby you can have, um, you can really kind of rapidly change which systems are associated with a particular name. And as a result, even if I'm able to take down one of those systems, another one is going to crop up in its place. 
Okay, and that, that idea is to kind of cycle or really flux quickly between these different IP addresses that a host name might resolve to. And that provides a level of resilience if you're a malware distributor or if you're trying to host a phishing website, you can now host it on a bot network and not worry about the possibility that one of the, the nodes in the phishing website might go down. So hopefully that made some sense. It's, it's one of the more common applications of, uh, of botnets. Let me talk about another application, and, and this is a, a little bit less common, but you can also use botnets for what's called Bitcoin mining. Um, this is a, in a bit of a different, a different vein. So Bitcoins are a form of online currency. They're kind of a, an unconventional, maybe an alternative currency, if you will. And it turns out that anybody can actually mint their own Bitcoins by doing enough computational effort. Um, and so what you can, you, know, you can start to imagine is that um, bot masters will basically take their, comp their compromised systems, let's say one of these vulnerable hosts, and they'll start doing Bitcoin mining on that host. Now, it, it also turns out that Bitcoins, they actually do have real world value. In other words, there are people out there who are willing to pay real dollars for Bitcoins, and for whatever reason they are, um, and, and they, they are kind of becoming a, a, an interesting alternative currency online. And so given that, it's not surprising that somebody might want to use a botnet to generate more Bitcoins, especially because anybody can really generate them. Uh, this is not as common a use case for botnets, but we are, uh, we have seen a number of instances of uh, bots that do uh, use Bitcoin or, or that try to do Bitcoin mining on them. And I expect that, you know, these are the kinds of things that, you know, uh, go with the ebb and flow of, of the threat landscape. Over time, you see different applications of, of compromised systems. That's just one of them. A third uh, application that I, I do want to also briefly mention, this is again not so common, uh, is in the, the area of, of, of using multiple identities. And there are systems in which having multiple identities can lead to uh, profitability for an attacker. And, and one classic example of that uh, would be, let's say, in an online poker site. Uh, so you could imagine if you have uh, multiple poker players, you know, let's say each of them have, are on bot-infected systems around the world, uh, they can then collude on the same table in a poker site. So maybe there's a, there's a legitimate poker site here. Let's say this is the, uh, uh, let's kind of mark it off. Let's say there's a legitimate poker site where you can play online poker. If I have all these guys connected to this poker site and they're all sharing the same table, uh, they can collude with one another to, to kind of game the system. If there's maybe one or two legitimate players who are not part of this botnet, the four colluding players, by knowing each other's whole cards and knowing um, things about their own betting strategies, they can actually kind of, uh, uh, you know, they can take advantage of, of um, extra information and win more money at the poker table from the guys who are, who are legitimate, who are not part of this, this colluding entity. And the reason this might require a botnet is that from the perspective of the site, it looks like these four machines are all coming from different places. They're all on, in different physical locations. Um, and so they, they appear to be different, but in fact, uh, they may actually be colluding. Uh, there are also cases, and I've heard of, in which uh, a bot master might try to infect enough systems and try to infect the system of a legitimate poker player. And if you are on a poker player system and you're, you've infected it, you may be able to see their whole cards, and that's even a whole other level of fraud. And so, I, you know, I think that I'm going to kind of pause right here in terms of additional applications. And I think I've given you quite a few. Um, and, and the reality is there actually are many more applications. And in general, I think anything nefarious that you can imagine doing online you could do via a botnet. So they really are very powerful. And I think that one term I've heard, and I do want to point it out because I think it's, it's a very powerful concept, is that you can think of botnets as, essentially as kind of infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service for online crime or for cyber crime. And we often hear about infrastructure as a service um, in other contexts, you know, uh, people who might let you uh, uh, rent out uh, computer systems to host uh, websites and, and to transfer data and so on and so forth. Uh, if you have a botnet, and, and typically the botmaster will control the botnet, and they'll rent out the botnet infrastructure to anybody who wants to do cybercrime. Uh, and, and oftentimes the, the, the botmaster may not be the same person as the one who's carrying out the rest of the cybercrime. He may just be the person who owns the bots, and he may be renting those bots to other people, for them to carry out cybercrime. So uh, they really are very powerful in that regard. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this series on botnet applications. I look forward to doing some additional videos on botnets and talking about how they work in some more detail.
Thanks a lot.